Are you struggling to make your ad campaigns work? Are you tired of not getting results that you want? I've got some game changing insights for you today because there's a high chance that you're analyzing your ads the wrong way. You can never be successful if you don't know how to analyze metrics, especially if you're not even sure what those numbers mean. Because let's face it, understanding how to analyze metrics is the key to success in the world of advertising. And once you know how to do it properly, you could be making over 10K a month. By the end of this video, you'll have a whole new understanding of how to make your campaigns work like magic. Let's go. All right, we are in my ad account right now. As you can see, these ads are launched Friday. This was in the previous video where I showed you the testing strategy. And now, as you can see, they have ran three to four days. So it's time to analyze these ads. But as you can see right now, I'm still using the basic table that says overview. These four tables are the basic tables of metrics within Pinterest. And the first thing we want to do is change this so that we get to see the metrics that we want to see and leave out the metrics that we don't want to see. What you can do is click this little pencil here and very easily just click a few of these, click save for later, give it a nice name. I'm going to give it my own name. And then you go here and click this pencil right here that says uh, custom tables. And it takes you to a page where you can edit your own tables. You can create a new one. Then we can create as a new custom table or duplicate an existing table. We just want to create a new one and then click start from scratch. So I can show you guys all the metrics that I like to pick and uh, you can choose set as default reporting table. And then of course, give it a name. So Thomas two create new table. And as you can see, nothing is selected here. So we can just start from the top and I'm going to show you everything that I like to select. Some things as you can see right here are only on the campaign level. Some things are on the ad group level and so on. And some things are on all levels and are already pre-selected. So you can like deselect them. First, what we're going to do is click the ad review status. So this is just handy. It's not necessary. And I'm maybe not even covering this in this video. Ad rejection reason in case it's rejected. The pin image. And let's see what else we need here. That's pretty much it. Then um, video length can be handy, but it's not necessary. Then we go to schedule budgets and bits. And here what we want to do is definitely select the daily budget. This is on the campaign level. I only use daily budgets, so campaign budget is not necessary for me to select. And if you want, some people like to do this, is the campaign start date and time, which is easy for you. Personally, I just always put it in the campaign name. That way I can filter on it too, which makes the like analyzation of a lot of ads at the same time easier for me. Uh, but if you want, you can select it start date because I know some people do that too. Then obviously you want to select spend result. I just select the specific results such as checkout or add to carts. Uh, so I'm going to skip this reach. You can select it. It's good to know, but it's also a metric that's not 100% necessary to use frequency. It's like how many times people see your ads. So this is more on the ads. Then we have impressions, uh, CPM. I'm just selecting everything that I use every now and then, but usually I make different tables, for example, to analyze the ads specifically or to analyze the funnel specifically or the conversion rate, whatever. So I have different tables set up. Now I'm just selecting everything. Now impressions, CPM, and that's it. This you can skip. Uh, if you select the goal and you like to use this, you can use it, but I never really use this. Then we go to total engagement. You can select engagements again. I never use this. Pin clicks, click through rate, CPC, outbound clicks, and here, what you can do is this is more about the ad. So you can use these metrics. They're a little bit too advanced to cover in this video, but um, the three second video views, average video play time, total video played at 25%. Um, these are all metrics that you can use personally, if I'd had to pick, because these are a lot, I would say just pick these two to analyze the ads. I will show you how to use this in a second. Then we go to paid engagement. We don't have to use this. Then we get to checkout conversions. Obviously, you want to know our CPA, our ROAS, our conversions, total our value. If you don't know what any of this means, don't worry. I'm going to cover it later in this video. Then we scroll down to add to carts. So here, I'm just selecting the total conversions. I know a lot of people like to see their add to cart ROAS or add to cart CPA. If you want, you can use this. Personally, I don't use it a lot. I just calculate it in my head. And then we go to sign up conversions. We have page visits. Uh, this is another one. You can select it, but you need to make sure it tracks correctly. I know that for a lot of people it doesn't. So in that case, I would say just leave it. Check with your own store the statistics that are in there. I'm going to select it for now though. Um, and I think that's the last one. 
these are all not interesting for us right now as we're just doing normal low ticket e-commerce and then here we have custom conversions which you can actually use I actually use this a lot I'm not going to show it in this video because again it gets a little bit too complicated but you can do a lot of interesting stuff here too you can set these up uh, when you go to reporting and then all the way to the right to custom conversions but for now this should do the job and you can go up here change the order if you want to right now it's pretty much in the right order because it's going from add all the way to conversion i'm just gonna put these here and now they're pretty much in the right order and that's it you can scroll down we're gonna click save changes and now if you go back to reporting you can find your table here with all the metrics just as how i like to analyze it with all the metrics in the right order okay now our table is set to make sure you're not going to lose a lot of money while advertising, I wrote down the top three mistakes people make when analyzing their data, which I'll show in a second. But first, let's analyze our data. Basically, we can break down analyzing the ads into two parts. The first one is the ads. So that's everything that's happening on Pinterest, within Pinterest, on your ads. And then when people get to your website, which is more like your funnel from the moment people visit your store until they are checking out. First, let's look at the ads. So as you can see right here, we have five campaigns. We launched this in the previous episodes where I showed you how to uh, find the products and how to create the test campaigns and everything. And as you can see, there are a couple metrics here. I'm just going to cover everything first and explain what these mean so that later you understand why we look at this. And then I'm gonna explain my process of analyzing this. So first we have the daily budget. Well, this all speaks for itself, the amount of spend it has. Right now, as you can see, it's set to uh, the last three days. Let's set this to like the last seven days from the moment it started running. And then we have the reach, obviously the total number of unique users who saw your ad. So this is everyone on Pinterest that saw your ad. The value is an approximation with 2.3% margin of error brought by Theta Sketch. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's around 10,000. Then we have the frequency. This is how many times people get to see your ad. Obviously, as they're new, Pinterest tries to show them to as many different people as possible to get data. But this is an interesting metric because you know if this still is like around one or 1.1, you know that it's still optimizing, obviously, because it's still like uh, showing it to different people to see how people react to your ads. So at the first stages, especially if you have a new store, you just want to be slow in making decisions because from the frequency we can already tell pinterest is still like showing it to different people then we have the impressions number of times your ad was on screen paid and earned and as you can see this number is a little bit higher so basically the frequency as you can see is a, a metric that um, is a result of these two so you can see 10,766 times 1.04 is 11,172 all right hope that makes sense so this is everything that was seen not just by an individual user but also multiple times by the same user then we have the cpm is the average cost per 1000 paid impressions this is basically what you pay for your ads you're paying for how many times pinterest shows your ad and for every thousand impressions you are paying one euro and 59 cents then we have the pin clicks this is the amount of time people click on your pin as you can see there's a difference between pin clicks and outbound clicks especially on mobile if people click on your pin they don't automatically go to your store this used to be the case on pinterest they changed it so now it pops up shows the pin and if they scroll up they go to your website so that's why there's a difference here we have the click-through rate so uh, total pin clicks divided by total impressions this is the percentage of how many people click on your pin then we have the cost per click so how much it costs for someone to click on your pin outbound clicks how many people go to your website three second video views how many people watch your video for at least three seconds so this is interesting especially if you know or right, you have eleven thousand impressions that's um, I don't have the people watch it for three seconds. So that means that it's a decent intro of your video. Average video playtime shows another metric that shows how good your video is performing, how long people watch on average. Then we have the page visits. So as you can see, there's a difference between outbound clicks and total page visits. This can be because it's not tracking correctly. Total number of page events resulting from interactions with your ad. So this can also be that people visit twice. So that's why sometimes there's a difference here. Then we have the total add to carts, how many people clicked the add to cart button. You need to make sure that the tracking is set up correctly in order for this to track. I'm not 100% sure if this is tracking correctly. I do see one add to cart here. So again, I'm not 100% sure. Then we have the uh, total CPA. This is the average cost per checkout event. So the CPA is how, how much it costs for you to get a checkout. 
which is important because if you have a $20 margin and your CPA is 10, which means that you're paying $10 for someone to buy your product, means that you're making profit. Then we have the total ROAS. So this is the average return on ad spend for checkout events. So you can have a ROAS on add to cards, on page visits, obviously, but what matters is the checkout because this is your average return on ad spend. So if you're spending one euro on ads and you have a ROAS of three, you are making $3 in sales in return for this. And then we have the total conversion, so the amount of time people checked out and the total order value of uh, the checkouts of the orders. All right, so these are all the metrics that I use. Um, again, I do have different tables where I use different metrics as well that are a little bit more advanced or a little bit more complicated. Usually, these are metrics that are related to other metrics. So it shows like, uh, for example, a number like the frequency, which can dictate if your ad's gonna do well or not. But this is just the basics and this is pretty much all that you need. Now, let's see how our ads did. And now, of course, focused on the ads, because like I said, we can break it down to the ads and from when people visit your store, everything up until uh, here is what people did with your ad. And then from here, it's when people go to your website, we can see, okay, what did they add the product to cart? Did they buy the product? All right, let's analyze these five campaigns at first. Usually, this is what I do after it ran for three days, so it's perfect. Um, and the first thing that I look at is the uh, cost per click. Now, this is not the real cost per click. You can show the cost per outbound click using custom columns. I'm not gonna show that in this video. If you want to know how to do that, uh, we have this in our course but that gives you better or more realistic look at how much it really costs for someone to go to your uh, website. And that's important because if you're looking at the ads, we basically want to know, all right, how expensive is it for someone to go to our website? Ultimately, I'm already gonna say this, and this is really important. Ultimately, what matters if you're analyzing ads is how much profit you're making. So next to analyzing your ads is really important to keep track of your profit. Always double check your metrics in your store. That's important too, because it's not always tracking correctly. But in the end, what matters is how much profit you're making. I see people make the mistake sometimes to turn off ads when they're in reality, they're just profitable, which is not logical at all, because obviously if you're making profit, you want to continue to run that ad. The cost for the ad is a really important metric. So the cost per click and the cost per click is basically a metric that is a result of your click through rate. So how many people click on your pin, which is a really important metric because it shows how interesting your ad is and the CPM. The CPM is a result of how the quality of your ad is, how the targeting of your ad is. So if you're targeting the right audience, your CPM will be lower compared to if you're targeting the wrong audience. So quality of your ad, basically just the quality of the ad in general. And then within the quality of the ad is like the literal quality of the ad, how well it's structured, how many people would like to watch it, how many people are entertained, uh, how many people are not offended by it. Um, that's obviously very important. Pinterest uh, and every social media platform values the experience of the customer a lot. They don't want people to feel offended by your ads. So that's the result in the CPM. And then of course, um, how many people click it, how many people buy from your ad, how many people like your ad, stuff like this uh, ultimately dictates your CPM, but also how much competition there is. Um, so obviously the more competition, the more advertisers are bidding for the same attention of that user, the higher the CPM. All right, so let's look at these five campaigns here and you can just filter on which one is the most expensive. We can see, okay, the moon lamp has a pretty high CPM. The click through rate is only 0.5%, which is on the lower side. I would say all these are on the lower side. Now, keep in mind, this is a new account. The CPM is normal. It's not extremely high, it's not extremely low. So that's normal, that's good because sometimes on a new account, you can see that the CPM is really high or in the US in general. But if it's a new account, what you can do is just it launched on Friday. So let's see what it did yesterday and or basically Sunday and Monday. And you'll find that in some cases, the CTR is already higher. Now I think on average it's higher. So it's 1.2% here. And if we go over the last seven days, okay, so it's slightly gone up. This is what you see often if it's given more time the CTR can go up, but still, it's still pretty low. So I'm still gonna let most of it run. Maybe I'm gonna turn off this one already because it has spent 18 euros. And as you can see, the metrics are pretty bad. If you have a brand, then what you have to do in this case is test new ads. Because this ad is not performing. I think there are like two ads in here 
two to four ads in here. Those are not performing really well. We can trust Pinterest that it's gonna show the ad that Pinterest thinks is gonna perform best. Usually that's the case. If you turn off ads, it's never, almost never gonna be higher. So in this case, you would have to test new ads. Now what you can do here, you can, we can click on the ad, we can see the uh, pin image, we can see the spend, but we can also see the data on these ads here. So average playtime, uh, three second video views. So you can see in here, okay, this one has a slightly higher click through rate. You can test to turn things off if you want to like let this run for a little bit longer. If you're dropshipping, I would just turn off this complete product. And then here it's like 38 cents. Keep in mind, it can be higher because we have 40 pin clicks, but only 25 outbound clicks. So in reality, this is more like 50 cents or higher. So that's still pretty high but because it's new, I'm just gonna let these run. Um, but yeah, now, now you understand like what I'll look at at first, which is the first thing that you're gonna look at if you're gonna analyze your ads because they're, they just started running. We only spent 15 euros so far. Most of these, I, I put 20 here in, in all these. Um, that's just because I didn't know the exact margins, but obviously they're not all 20 margin, but let's say the, they are, then they didn't even spend their break even margin yet. So um, this one, we already know the results are pretty bad consistently. So we already know, all right, there's a pretty low chance that this is gonna be profitable. And that's another reason why we look at the cost per click. The more expensive your ad is, the harder it is for it to be profitable. You would have to compensate with your conversion rate. So you'd have to have a really good conversion rate in order for this to be profitable. And conversion rates on Pinterest are lower on average in general, because the traffic is cheaper and traffic is lower quality. We already know, okay, we would have to have a really high conversion rate in order for this to be profitable. That chance is very low, so it's better to focus on these other products. All right, now we looked at some numbers regarding the ads, but there's one thing that's really important. Never make decisions based purely off the performance of your ads. You always want to look, like I just said, at your profit. So I haven't talked about the other metrics yet, but if we just say this product right here, it has got a sale, so it got one sale, two or three at the cards. So it's looking all right, uh, just normal metrics. Because we can see right here, we got 25 outbound clicks. So if we got two at the cards, that would mean two to three at the cards. That would mean we have like a 10% at the card rate, which is pretty good. Also, it's, it's realistic. And we have a $20 margin. If we got one sale, that means we're profitable. Even though the click rate is not very high, CPM is also not very low. It's normal for us. We don't want to turn this off, obviously, even if, if the one with the 50% uh, click-through rate has a sale, we also don't want to turn it off because it's profitable. Now, if that's the case, and I'll get into the checkouts and add to cards later, but um, if that's the case, then it can be interesting to uh, optimize the ads for this specific product because we know, all right, it's getting a good add to cart rate. It's getting a good conversion rate, even though it's just on on like 18 euros spend or $18 spend. Um, but we know, okay, there's potential here. It might be worth it to optimize the ads because if we can, as you can see right here, so like I said, this is probably around 50 cents, which is pretty high for Pinterest. A outbound cost per click of 50 cents or higher is pretty high. So if we can get this down to 25 cents, which is very realistic in Pinterest, uh, we have plenty of products that are having a below 10 cents uh, cost per click outbound. So let's say we want to like cut this in half, which is realistic, that would mean we can be twice as profitable. So now the hard thing is to get to cut it with 50% or to cut it in half. Uh, that's the hard part, but it is possible. So in that case, what we wanna do is we want to see, okay, where can we optimize this? And for this, I selected the three second video views and the average play time. And what's interesting or what's important to know, we have accounts that have spent over like 500K in ad spend. And when we looked at the average video play time, we saw that it was nine seconds. That's pretty long, um, especially for just general advertising, nine seconds average video play time is pretty long. Probably the products and ads that spend the most just had really good videos, which influenced that high number. But um, knowing that this is only six seconds means that we can optimize our video. Also the three second video views um, usually, and that's pretty normal right here. It's like 50% of your impressions. That's normal. Um, that's pretty much always the case. So you can go into like 
the metrics that I just showed, like how many people watch 25% of your ad, how many people watch 50% of your ad. And based on that, you can see, okay, where do we need to improve this? Let's say we have like only 1000 people that watch this video for three seconds. We know, okay, we definitely need to improve at the start of the video, but because we got a low click through rate, we kind of already know that's the case because a low click through rate indicates that people are not amused or attracted or interested in your ad. So that's something that we definitely have to improve. And if the average video playtime is not terribly low, that means that most of your focus in this case should go on the first few seconds of your ad so that you can improve that and you can get clicks for a lot cheaper, entertain people more, make them more interested and get them to your website cheaper. Now, when you're analyzing these things, especially as a beginner, it's important that you prevent losing thousands of dollars. That's why I wrote down the top three mistakes that people make when analyzing ads, which again, I'll get to in a second. But first, we have the second part of analyzing the ads, and that is what happens after someone clicks on your ad. Let's go scroll to the back. And as you can see right here, we have our add to cards, we have our CPA, we have our checkout, ROAS, conversions, everything. And that's basically the second part and maybe even the more important part because this is what really matters. Like I said earlier, you always want to keep track of your profit and preferably your profit margin. Now, this is not completely necessary as a beginner. I mean, you can look at your break even margin and your CPA. And based of that, you know, if you're making profit, of course, make sure that your break even margin includes all your costs, because that's a big mistake people make, uh, especially beginners is they don't include fees or returns and stuff like that. Let's say your product cost is $10 and you're selling it for $30, then your profit margin, it's not $20. You have fees, you have people that you have to pay, you have, uh, I don't know what, what, uh, what other costs, Shopify, whatever, include all the costs and uh, maybe you only have a margin of 15 to maybe $17. So that's very important to keep in mind. So um, that's why I always say keep track of your profit because that's the ultimate way to know if you're profitable or not. And that's what matters in the end. Now for these specific campaigns, unfortunately, they're not performing very well, uh, which is also normal on a new account. So that's completely fine, but um, we can't really use this data to analyze it. So I'll just have to come up with some data um, to show you guys what I'd normally do. Um, but basically at the, at the start, if you have your ads running for three days, your test campaigns, then if there are ads that have a good add to cart rate, now you can also use custom columns to show your add to cart rate. Again, I'm not going to show that in this video. You can also do this in your head. So uh, we have one add to cart here with uh, 25 outbound clicks. So that's a 4% uh, at the cart rate right here. So that's also something you can do to just quickly calculate this. But uh, the at the cart rate is also a pretty important metric, especially at the start, because this shows if your offer is good or not. Now, at the very start, you can already start optimizing your offer. This is a big part of Pinterest ads, which I will show in the next video how to do that, how to really optimize something and how to optimize within Pinterest. But what you need to understand right now is that if you have a good add to cart rate, then you probably want to let that ad run because if everything would be normal and everything would be average, let's say we have a 10% add to cart rate, but we don't have any sales yet. Now, normally, if you have 10% add to cart, you would have maybe two to 3% uh, conversion rate normally, but maybe we we're just unlucky and didn't get any sales yet. So if we do have 10% at the cards or we do have a lot of at the cards, but not a lot of sales yet, then you definitely want to let that campaign run because there's a very high chance that if it's gonna be normal and it's gonna be average, that we will get more and more sales and it can actually be very profitable. Now, what happens if let's say this product right here, as you can see, it has a pretty good click through rate. Clicks are very cheap, but we don't have any at the cards. What we wanna do here is you want to optimize this product, this landing page because the ad part like the first part it's good i mean we get cheap traffic but when people get onto our website all of a sudden they're not interested anymore so then we need to improve on our landing page now it's not always the case and you shouldn't always look at it separately because what is shown in the ad is a very big influence on what people do on your page so you can kind of already sell your product in the ad it's very important the ad itself but we do know that if people get to our website and we have zero at the cards, then there's definitely something wrong in our offer, in our landing page. So we need to improve that in order to make sure that we get a good add to cart rate and a good conversion rate. Okay, so that's the add to cards. And then finally we have the conversions. 
in between, you see the CPA and the ROAS. CPA I already explained, ROAS I already explained. Like I said, in the end, what matters is your profit margin. So am I making profit and how much profit am I making? Because if you have a low profit margin, if you're going to scale, you know that it's very likely that that product is not gonna be profitable anymore. Let's say if you have 50% profit margin, then you know I have a lot of room to scale and it's very likely that you're gonna make a lot more money if you increase the budget. But another great thing that you can do to help with this is to calculate your break even ROAS, which means what ROAS do I need to have in order to break even? So let's take the example of our $10 product and we sell it for $30, we have a $20 margin. Let's forget about the fees for now because that makes it uh, more difficult. But let's say we have a $20 margin, then we know that we have a break even ROAS of 1.5, which means if we spend $20 times 1.5 is 30. So then we are breaking even. To keep it simple, let's say we have spent $30 and we got two sales of $60. We have a $40 margin on two sales, which means we are making $10 in profit. So our ROAS 2 is profitable. If we have below 1.5, so if we have only one, let's say we spend $30 and make only one sale, then we have a ROAS of one because we put one euro in and or one dollar in and we got one dollar back or thirty dollars in and thirty dollars back it's the same but now we didn't make any profit we actually lost ten dollars because we have to pay for the product and everything so yeah that's how the ROAS works and that you can use to see if you're profitable you just need to calculate your break even ROAS and that's a really easy way to see if everything is profitable overall because you can have a CPA of your profit margin but maybe you are on average selling like one and a half products on every order, then maybe your CPA is like the same as your break even margin, but in reality you're making profit because you're selling more than one on average. But if you're a complete beginner, maybe this ROAS thing is a little bit too advanced for now. In that case, you can just look at your CPA, your break even margin. If your CPA is below your break even margin, you should be profitable. And then finally, we have the conversions and total order value. This obviously speaks for itself. This is your amount of conversions you have. This is what matters most. And then the order value is how much um, you made on those orders. Okay, so now we discuss what you have to do if your ads are not good or if the results are not good. So when you can basically turn off your campaigns. Now, of course, none of these are profitable right now, but I'm still choosing to let them run because the account is new. But even still, if the account wasn't new, maybe I would turn off the one that's Maybe these two, I would turn them off already, but I would continue to run the other three, even though they don't have any sales yet. That's because on Pinterest, you just need to give things a little bit more time and you can optimize it. So even though right now we have very low add to carts and no checkouts yet, we can optimize our landing pages so that the traffic that gets sent to those pages will be converted in the future. And that's basically the process that you want to do. You want to look at, all right, where in the funnel do I need to improve in order to make it profitable? And that can be on the ads. So for these two, you definitely have to improve the ads to get lower costs because with these high costs, it's really hard to be profitable. But in this case, we're like, we can test multiple products. So I would just turn it off and test new products. If you have a brand, you have to test new ads. Um, but for the other products that do have a decently good click -through rate or uh, decently good ad costs, we would have to improve the funnel because as we can see, we are getting very little add to carts. So, um, and this is normal again, because it's a new account. So Pinterest has to find the right audience, the right buyers is basically starting from zero. So that's another reason why we don't have any add to carts and why it's so low. But um, normally, you know, all right, if I don't get any add to carts, I need to improve on my landing page. And if you do have a lot of add to carts, but you're not getting any checkouts, you know, okay, maybe I need to improve something on the checkout. So from these metrics right here, you can see where in your funnel you need to improve and you want to keep optimizing it to make sure your ads become profitable. And then when your ads will be profitable, you can scale them. And that's the next step basically, which I'm not going to cover in this video, but hopefully in this series in the future, I can show you guys how to scale your Pinterest ads. Hopefully by now you have a clear understanding of the basics of analyzing data. And like I said, I want to discuss the three biggest mistakes people make when they start analyzing data. The first mistake a lot of people make is they get emotionally attached, all right? They think their product or campaign has to work. They have seen it somewhere or they think this is really a cool 
cool product it has to sell and they let it run for way too long basically wasting a lot of money because they think it's going to do well often not even optimizing it they just let it run and think it's gonna magically sell out of nowhere or they do optimize it but if something is fundamentally bad and you can optimize whatever you want but it's not going to sell maybe there's something fundamentally wrong in your offer people can get it for like 10 times as cheap in the normal stores whatever it is there's something fundamentally there's a reason why it's not selling and people let it run just because they think it's good always just look at the data never get emotionally attached to your campaigns just make decisions based off the numbers and then the second mistake which i kind of already discussed is that people turn things off when it's actually profitable they are teach that a below 1% click-through rate is bad and then they just filter on click-through rate and turn off everything that has a below 1% click-through rate even though it's very profitable and although I just said like a 1% click-through rate is good it's like average we have had products that had a 0 0.7 0 0.8 click-through rate and the product was actually very profitable that's because maybe a lot of people are not interested but the people that do actually click on your pin and go to your website are very interested in your product so um, that's why I said always look at the profit but I see this all the time people don't really know what all these numbers mean that's why this video is so important you really need to understand what every metric means in order to be successful in advertising and then the final mistake it's kind of the opposite of mistake number one and that is that people are scared to spend money they turn off their ads way too fast they don't give pinterest time especially on pinterest you need to give it some time to find the right audience to find out what a buyer looks like for your campaign for that specific product and people just turn off campaigns way too quickly because they see hey i just spent 15 euros and i didn't make any money and maybe they have multiple campaigns running and they spent like hundred dollars and they think oh i didn't make any money so i have to cut everything and if you keep doing this you keep in this cycle of turning things off way too fast by which you never give pinterest the time to optimize something and actually become profitable uh, so that's another big mistake that a lot of people make so what you can take from this video what i explained earlier is that you can turn things off after three days if it's really bad but most of our campaigns most of our products run for at least a week on pinterest because it just needs more time that's also why we use lower budgets to test things on pinterest all right that's it guys remember the most important thing in the end is your profit and understanding where to improve in your funnel hopefully this video helped you to understand that now this is not everything analyzing ads is really important understanding the metrics is really important but it's also important that you find really good products earlier in this series i made a video on how you can do product research to find very good products that are usually profitable right from the start so that helps a lot and makes the entire process a lot easier so if you want to know how to find good products make sure to check this video and i'll see you guys there